If you are alive and have a pulse right now, you've probably noticed that the price of everything seems to be going up, and it's going up fast. So in this video, I want to tell you about this inflation that we are facing, uh, what's going to happen with it, and most importantly, how to protect yourself. Now, I've been noticing the price of stuff rising steadily for a while now, but it really hit me last night when I went to a furniture store to buy a new office chair, and I noticed that almost everything in the store had the, um, had this, th there is a big piece of tape over a part of the box and then a price tag over the piece of tape. And, and I was thinking about like, why is that? And I realized what it was is that the price was actually written on the box itself. And so the price that they got on the box when the thing came from the factory to the store, they had to update it. Like they had to raise the price and they had to raise the price fast. So they had to put a piece of tape over it and put the new price. So nowadays in 2022, in the era of inflation, you can't put the price of something actually on the box, right? Because it's gonna change every few months or every few weeks. And I've heard of this happening in third world countries. I had never seen it happening here in the USA. So that was kind of a wake up call. And I thought I should talk about this and what to do about it. Now, what happens in just about any inflationary period is that the price of stuff goes up, uh, but then the amount that people get paid doesn't, at least for a while. Usually it catches up eventually, like after several months of the prices of everything being higher, then the salaries and the wages finally go up, but only after the person has been having to pay these increased prices for several months. And of course, the government is blaming this on Russia or it's blaming it on a certain virus. Um, right. But but I mean, obviously, that's just obfuscating. They've nearly doubled the money supply in just the past two years. They have printed so much money. This is absolutely unprecedented in history. So the prices of things would have to go up because if you print a ton of money, then the value of each individual dollar and, and every country is doing this right and the value of each individual euro is going down. And so that's what looks like a price increase because the value of the currencies is going down. And so they'll they'll blame whatever happens to be the most convenient excuse. So they blame Russia or blame COVID or, you know, next year they're going to blame something else for it. But really, it's the money printing. And in fact, it's interesting that they they blame the virus and the, the lockdowns and such, which did cause a, a massive hit on the uh, economy. But if you look at how much they printed compared to how much was lost due to the lockdowns and such, they printed 10 times as much money as was lost during the lockdowns, right? 10 times as much. So you could say that there was a good reason to print 10% of that money, but the other 90%, uh, they just use the virus and the lockdowns as an excuse, right? And now they're using Russia as an excuse. And there's a few reasons that they're doing that. One is that they know that it makes it really difficult for the average person to live, right? They know that the price of everything is going to go up before wages and salaries go up. Right. And in the meantime, they're coming, coming in, being the hero and saying, oh, well, we'll give you this money. Right. This is the, the idea of universal basic income, that everybody is dependent on the government in order to live. And if you want to live, well, you have to satisfy whatever the government wants of you. Right. And there's no such thing as rights when it comes to getting money. They say, oh, you know, you can't, I can't violate your right of free speech. I can't violate your right of freedom of religion. But I can say that if you say the wrong things or if you believe the wrong things, then the money gets cut off, right? So if they, if they make everybody dependent on the government, then this whole idea of constitutional rights, of, of individual liberty, kind of goes out the window. And then the second reason is that the governments all over the world, and it's interesting how this is all being done in lockstep, that every government is doing the same thing at the same time in a coordinated manner. Governments all over the world are moving to what's called a central bank digital currency. That means that every central bank, that means the Federal Reserve in the U.S., the European Central Bank, and every other country are creating these digital currencies, which is something like Bitcoin, 
but it's issued by the central bank, which is owned by the government. Or uh, if you want to be um, argue semantics, you could say the government is owned by the central bank is probably probably more the case. Um, but they are creating these digital currencies that will replace the old currencies. And whenever they're creating something new to replace something old, they find some excuse to destroy the thing that's old. And so what they're doing here is that they're destroying the dollar, they're destroying the euro, they're destroying their regular currencies. And once those are destroyed, then they can come in and say, okay, we have this new currency that works better. And in this case, that new currency is going to be a central bank digital currency, which means that it's a currency that exists it on a computer like you don't have any cash you don't have any paper it just exists on your phone app or on your computer and it's completely controlled and manipulated by the central bank or by the government and so they see every transaction that you make they know every dollar that you have and they can push a button and turn off the dollars that you have if they so desire so that is the system that they're moving towards and there's the, like almost every country is doing this and they're talking about it openly. I'm not making this up. They're talking about this openly. And so my, the part that is my hypothesis is that they are intentionally destroying the old currencies so that they'll have an excuse to bring in the new, the, the new fully digital currencies. So anyway, that leaves the obvious question, okay, what do we do about this? Well, most people's, um, most people's instinct is like a protective instinct that, okay, there's uncertainty, uh, there is bad things coming on in the future, so I'm gonna hunker down, I'm gonna save as much money as I can, and I'm gonna like protect it with my life. And um, even though that's our natural instinct, economically speaking, that's a really, really bad strategy. In fact, that's exactly the opposite of what we should be doing. And in fact, it's the people that are able to keep their heads and keep calm and look at this with a logical, uh, rational mind that are going to actually benefit from this time. Any, any time there is a upheaval, any time there is a big change, there's always chances to benefit, right? There's always chances to thrive during those times. And it's going to be the people that are able to keep a cool head and the people who are, um, not, who are not afraid that are going to be the beneficiaries of this time. And so logically, the worst thing that you could do is just like hold on to your money because what are you holding on to? You're holding on to money that's just evaporating, right? That's, that's gradual, quickly going down in value. So if you have, let's say you got $10,000 in the bank, well, a couple of years from now, that's going to be worth 8,000 or 5,000. And, you know, nobody knows how exponential this inflation is going to be. Um, if they've printed double the amount of money, or if they've doubled the amount of money in circulation, it could very well be that a dollar a couple of years from now is worth 50 cents in 2020 dollars, right? Or it could be even worse because the compounding effect of people all losing trust in a currency at the same time can make it even worse. So obviously you don't want to keep cash, right? You don't want to keep cash, you don't want to keep anything that's closely tied to cash, uh, like US government bonds or you know any other government bonds you're not going to want to keep. Um, you also, you probably don't want to keep stocks right now because the stock market is at an all-time high. If you ask me, I think it's at the peak of a massive bubble. And what normally happens in an inflationary episode, just historically speaking, and, and by the way, I went to school for economics, so um, it's not useful very often, but it is useful for this. Um, what normally happens during an inflationary episode is that, well, the inflationary episode is caused by the government or the central bank printing a whole bunch of money. And when they print a whole bunch of money, they lend it out at low interest rates. So whenever you hear the news say that the central bank or the government has decided to drop interest rates, what, what dropping or lowering interest rates really means is they are printing money and they are lending it to banks for a very, uh, very low interest rate. That's how they can drop interest rates. And so what happens is they drop interest rates because they think it stimulates the economy and then, uh, which it, it appears to, in the same way that like 
buying new shoes and a new TV on a credit card that with money that you don't have to spend stimulates your lifestyle, right? It's like, it's not real and it's gonna, you're gonna have to pay for it eventually. Um, so it does sort of stimulate the economy in that way. And so it makes the current administration, whoever that is, look good in the short term. But what happens is inflation. And then when the inflation hits, well, there's only one way to stop the inflation, and that is to stop printing money. And of course, when they stop printing money, then there's no free money being lent to the banks, and then the interest rate goes back up to its normal, natural level. And when that happens, it causes a massive crash. It causes a massive crash in the stock market. It crosses, in 2008, it caused a massive crash in the housing market, because now the, uh, the mortgage rates have all gone up, because the interest rates have all gone up, the mortgage rates have all gone up, the amount of money that's necessary to get a business loan goes up, so the stock market crashes. So um, basically, they, they only have two options. Either they can let the inflation run wild and destroy the dollar, or they can uh, stop printing money, let interest rates go up to their natural level, and destroy the economy. Really, both cash and stocks are at a huge risk, right? And I would not keep any money in cash or have money invested in the stock market at this point in history. So whatever money that you have on hand, I would invest in something, uh, <clears throat> something that is, is not so tied to the, the performance of the economy. So, um, for me, it would be really gold, silver, or cryptocurrency. Um, gold and silver are pretty safe bets. Cryptocurrency is always all over the place, so you know you you have to be willing to accept the risk there. But um, it you know it may go up like crazy. Who knows if the if the government currencies are destroying themselves, then you may make a ton of money on investing in cryptocurrency. But, uh, and, and I don't even say this in terms of investing, really. It's just like, if you have a whole bunch of money in dollars in the bank, it's just disappearing. So, so you should probably put it in something else. But what I, I really want to focus on, uh, apart from investing, which is not something that I even really care about that much, is um, I, I saw a video from Warren Buffett where he was asked, what's the best way to protect yourself from inflation? And he said, the best way to protect yourself is to increase your skill set, increase your earning potential, right? Learn new things that are going to make you worth more money to employers or to customers in the future. And um, I know Warren Buffett is evil, but He's not a dummy, you know, he knows what he's talking about here, and I agree with him 100%. Like, the best way to do this is to increase your earning potential, because your, the, the price of stuff is pretty much definitely going to outrun the amount of money that you're getting paid. And so when this happens, you are getting poorer and poorer and poorer. And so you have to stay out ahead of that. And the way that you do that is by making yourself more and more valuable to the market. Which actually reminds me of another quote from uh, Benjamin Franklin, who, you know, things that are true tend to be true across, uh, across large amounts of time. And Benjamin Franklin famously said that if you will pour your purse into your mind, then your mind will fill your purse with gold. In other words, invest in learning things that are valuable and those things will pay you back many, many times and more than enough to keep pace and outrun uh, rampant inflation. Now, another thing that's interesting to consider is how inflation affects debt. So inflation is good for people who are in debt, which actually when it comes to governments who like the US government is perpetually in debt, is always in debt, including to its own uh, Federal Reserve, right? I mean, this is like the biggest scam of the millennium that the Federal Reserve, which is a private banking group, prints money, lends it to the government. The government owes that money back to the Federal Reserve plus interest. And it can never possibly pay back all of the money that it owes because 
the principal, like the money that it borrowed in the first place, is all the money that there is. So they can never, ever possibly pay it back. But if they're having a hard time making their payments, well, if you inflate the currency, if they, the currency is losing value, then that actually takes away from interest rates that a borrower is paying on debt. And so that affects the individual too. So let's say, for example, that you have a car payment of, or you have, you have a, a loan on your car that charges 5% interest rate. Well, if you're paying a 5% interest rate, but the level of inflation is at 10%, well, actually, the, the real interest rate that you're paying is negative 5%. So actually, the bank is paying you to have that car. Essentially, if the, the interest rate you're paying is lower than the, um, the rate of inflation, then the, you are actually making money on the deal, right? You're not actually paying interest in real terms. You're actually getting paid interest by the bank. And so this is kind of cool for some people because it means if you have debt, then and the debt isn't adjustable rate, right? Like, so, and some banks are, are um, will do this to you. They'll say, uh, "Oh, your your debt is adjustable rate." So because it's ten percent inflation, we knock your your interest rate up to fifteen percent. But if it's a fixed rate, then you can actually take on debt and be paid to borrow. Effectively, you're being paid to borrow, or if your debt is the same as the inflation rate. So let's say that you're, you're paying 10% interest and the inflation rate is at 10%. Basically, it's like zero interest because they cancel each other out. Um, if you're paying more than that, if you're paying 15%, but the inflation rate is 10%, well, you're still only paying 5% effectively. So you've gone down from paying 15% to now you're only paying 5%. So if you want to... Um, borrow in order to invest in something, then actually the inflation rate makes it a lot easier. Uh, assuming you get in fast before the banks adjust because they'll adjust their interest rates higher because of the inflation. And you also have to consider too that whatever number the government gives you about inflation, like the government says, okay, there's 10% inflation. The government is you can count on they're pretty much always underestimating, underreporting the inflation rate, right? Because, um, I, and the government and the media, because the government and the media are always lying to you. Like, that's, that's their job. <laughs> and, and life gets so much easier when you recognize that, that the government and the media are probably lying, they're probably exaggerating, they're probably leaving out important parts of the truth. Uh, and if you stop trusting them, then your life the standard of living just gets better immediately because you're able to say, okay, like, what's the real story here instead of what I'm being told, what they're trying to brainwash me with. So anyway, the government numbers for inflation are almost always below the real numbers for inflation. And they have, they have ways of doing this. Like they say, oh, well, gas prices don't count and food prices don't count and, and housing prices don't count. Which is funny because like those are the three biggest expenses that most people care about. And they, they leave those out of the inflation measurement. Uh, so they play all sorts of tricks like that. So whatever the government is saying the inflation rate is, you can be fairly confident that the actual inflation rate is a fair bit higher than that. So you can make your decisions accordingly. Now, um, the question of uh, like, where is this going in the future? You know, what's gonna happen with this? Uh, well. That's obviously like nobody can, can predict the future with 100% accuracy, but my guess is it's not going to get better anytime soon, right? With the amount of money printing that they're doing, uh, with all of the attacks on the supply chain, um, and not just because of lockdowns, but there's, I mean, if you look into this, it's, it's nuts. Uh, there's an interesting channel to look at called the Ice Age Farmer that I highly recommend is if you know, if you have, if you're, you're strong of heart, because it's, uh, it's scary, but there are, are many different attacks on the supply chain all going on at the same time, and it doesn't show any signs of getting better anytime soon. So be smart, um, 
don't don't feel like don't get in that defensive posture where you're just going to hunker down and and just like um keep your cash under your mattress obviously that's a bad strategy be smart right have faith trust in god this is going to get better right this is all for a reason this is all ultimately under control and ultimately what is happening to us is happening for us. It's going to make us stronger and it's going to give us some new opportunities that we have never ever seen before. So have faith, keep your head up, be calm, be smart, and everything will be okay. In fact, you may even thrive during this period. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that it helps you to have a better future and to navigate this very difficult period. And, you know, if you enjoyed it, I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button. Leave me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. If you think I'm full of crap, let me know your thoughts. If you have some, some other things to add, um, this is a very difficult time. And, and if you have some other ideas, like I'd love to hear them, leave them for me in the comments. And then if you enjoyed this video, I think you'd also really enjoy this video all about how to be financially free.